So how do you pray? You pray to God as source. You pray to God as sacred, as sovereign, as supplier, as savior. And one final beautiful note, you pray to God as security. Lead us not into temptation. This affirms what God has already declared. He is holy. He doesn't tempt anyone, not anyone. Scripture is abundantly clear on that. James 1.13, let no one say when he's tempted, I'm being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, and He Himself doesn't tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he's carried away and enticed by his own lusts. God doesn't tempt. We say, God, give us bread, and God says, I'm going to give you bread. I make that promise. We say, God, forgive my sins, and God says, I've forgiven you all your sins in Christ. In the large sense, and I will continue to forgive your sins, wash your feet in the John 13 sense, if you forgive others. And God says, believe me, I would never lead you into temptation. So you're praying then that God would be God. Protect us from trials that could turn into temptation would be the idea. And God promises that. There's no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation make a way of escape, 1 Corinthians 10, 13. God will keep you alive. God will keep on forgiving your sins, washing your feet, as it were, as long as you're forgiving everyone else. And He will never, ever put you in a situation where a trial is going to directly lead to a temptation. He will always give a way of escape. So when you pray, pray this way. All I ask for myself is life, forgiveness, and holiness. All the rest I leave to you so that your name will be hallowed and your kingdom will come. Pray this way. John 14, 13 says, whatever you ask in My name, that will I do. If you ask Me anything in My name, I will do it. Do you understand what that means now? Anything consistent with what He's promised, the last three, consistent with who He is, the first requests. And we can wrap it up with the words of James, you have not because you what? That's not. Let's just, let's just agree to start praying for the kingdom to come, right? Let's not be praying for an exit. Let our prayers be this, Father, we acknowledge Your absolute sovereignty. We acknowledge You're the source of all that is good. We acknowledge that You are holy. That means You never do anything wrong, never make a mistake. We want Your name to be hallowed. We want You to advance Your kingdom through the gospel one soul at a time. We want You to keep us alive so that we can be useful. We want You to fill us with thanksgiving that produces forgiveness for all who ever offend us so that we can put Your forgiveness on display. And we want You always to show us the way through a trial so that it doesn't end up as a temptation. That's how you pray. That's how you pray. If you pray that way, you ask anything. He says, I will do it for my name's sake.